Universal Studios Hollywood wasn't originally meant to be a theme park. It was a simple studio tour that slowly grew over time. In the 70s and 80s, in order to compete with Disneyland, Universal started adding special scenes to the tour, showcases of special effects and small experiences that made guests feel like they were riding not just through sets, but through the movies themselves. Eventually, a full theme park grew around the tour. The tram stops are still a highlight of the Hollywood Park to this day. When Disney heard that Universal was planning to open a second studio park in Florida to compete with Walt Disney World, they decided to beat them to the punch by opening Disney's MGM Studios theme park first, which was originally mostly centered around an extended backlot tour that shared quite a few similarities to the one Universal Hollywood was built around. So, in order to avoid looking like they were ripping off Disney's new park, Universal decided to rip off Disney by making a more traditional theme park. Most of Universal Studios Florida's opening day rides were actually tram stops from the Hollywood tour that were expanded into full attractions. Small things like a brief encounter with the shark from Jaws became a whole boat ride through Amphi Island. My personal favorite, and a favorite of many fans, was Confrontation. It took a relatively simple encounter with King Kong from the tram tour and turned it into a suspended dark ride through a New York City that was under attack by the mighty King of Skull Island with an incredible scale that few rides in the world have ever met. The queue is a recreation of Penn Station. The walls are lined with graffiti from actual New York City street artists. Unofficially, guests were invited to add to the decor themselves too. Guests then board a ride vehicle modeled after the Roosevelt Island Tramway. These trams were suspended from a crack in the ceiling of the building and could bounce up and down while moving forward along the track to add more motion and excitement to the ride. The ride itself was incredible. 50 different building facades recreating Manhattan in the 70s. A full-scale helicopter crashing the power lines and on fire. Two different full-size King Kong animatronics one was 8,000 pounds, and the other was an insane 13,000 pounds, each with his trademark banana breath. A truly exciting journey through a city under attack by the eighth wonder of the world. And after exiting, guests got to take pictures with King Kong. Unfortunately, the ride was plagued by ongoing technical issues. That was probably a big factor in Confrontation closing in 2002. Though the ride being set in a ruined New York City with crashed aircrafts probably didn't help after 2001. Plus, Universal has never been concerned with legacy attractions, preferring instead to focus on whatever themes or ideals are more trendy and exciting. Obviously, it made a lot of sense for Universal to move away from the King Kong franchise, which was dead and probably would never be a big hit again in favor of The Mummy, a series which will always be a reliable, critical, and commercially successful franchise. <coughs> Big thanks to MK1 Monster Arc 1989 for suggesting this video. If anyone else has any suggestions they'd like to see me do in the future, please let me know in the comments, and I'll do my best to make that happen.